Hello friends, in continuation to our talks on Europhometry, in this video, I will touch upon how should you interpret the flow patterns. Now, if you see a normal Europhometry curve generated by a female, adult female, this will be a graph like this, an inverted U, little narrow base. Women empty their bladder much quicker than as compared to the, the male of the same age group. They usually have a little higher Qmax as compared to the male of the same age group. So this is the kind of a graph printout that you will get. Uh, the maximum flow rate in an adult female touches close to 30. The flow time is about 10-15 seconds. If you see a normal curve of a male, or a similar age group, the graph will look something like this. This is again inverted U, but the base is a little broad. If you see this graph, the peak flow rate is little more than 20 ml per second. And the time taken by a male is also little longer. And this is about close to 25 seconds or 30 seconds to empty the bladder. So this differentiation between a male and a female, you should first understand. Then, if you go by the patterns of Europhometry, there are various patterns. Patterns means the shape of the graph that you see. The first pattern is called a constrictive pattern, which results in patients of stricture urethra, typically. And stricture can be there from the external urinary meters, anywhere in the urethra, penile, membranous, prostatic, up to bladder neck. Some patients of a carcinoma prostate treated by radiation or advanced cancer prostate by, because they produce stiff urethra can also give rise to a similar constrictive pattern. And in the constrictive pattern, patient voids like this. He starts voiding. The stream reaches a Qmac, which is usually low, 5, 6, 7. And then it stays on that for a while. It just goes on, goes on for a little long period of time. And if you get a graph, you'll get a graph like this. In this graph, you will notice that the Qmax is about 5 ml per second. And the patient has taken very, very long time, 110, 120 seconds, little about 2 minutes. So this is, if you look at this graph, this looks like a box. And therefore, it is also known as box type of a pattern. You can have some variations in this. Suppose another patient passes urine like this. Look here again. On, on the top, there's a plateau, flat plateau. So it is also a box pattern. The only difference is, if you look at this report, the Q max is instead of five in the earlier one, this is 10 here. But again, you find a flat top. And flat top is indicative of a constructive pattern, which is indicative of presence of stricture urethra somewhere. In either patient, same again, constrictive pattern. This time you, he voids like this and report comes like this. The, the Q max is very, very low. Three, four, five, he's just voiding a little bit, little bit. So the point I'm trying to make is don't go by what is the Q max. Q max can be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, whatever. But what you have to see here in the pattern is a flat top for duration of time. Then second pattern is known as compressive pattern, also called as prostatic pattern. By compression, we mean that the urethral lumen is being compressed by something from outside. And common example is BPH or prostatomegaly or whatever. Here, as the patient voids, initially the graph rises. So the ascendo part of the graph is rather acute and short lasting. The peak is there for a short time and then descending limb of the graph is very long. Now this is characteristic of a compressive pattern and this is the graph that you will get. Qmax is usually low, about 10 ml, depending upon the severity of obstruction, usually 10 ml, 12 ml, 13 ml, 8 ml like that. So the Qmax, the time to Qmax is short. But then after that, they void slowly, 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 and descending limb is therefore 
more time consuming. Again, in another patient, if you see, he voids like this. In the end, there's a one peak. And if you see his report, this is the report. The time to Qmax is here about seven seconds. And then flow rate is gradually, gradually declining. And when patient is about to finish his urine stream, he makes another jerk to empty the urine, which is present in his urethra. This is very typical of compressive patterns. If you see either patient here, who voids like this, and if you see his graph, you will notice that in the descending limb of the uroflometry graph, there are some peaks. And again, these peaks are effort by the patient to use abdominal straining, mild type, to augment his urinary flow. So these variations you will see in your day-to-day -day practice and you should know how to interpret these minor variations. The main pattern is again a quick Qmax and then slow decline. In either patient, you will notice that he works like this. And if you see his graph, he initially for about initial 20 seconds, he voids and almost has finished voiding. But then there's a drop, 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 drop urine coming. And that's what typically known as terminal dribbling. Very classical of prostatic obstruction. So I'm telling you what minor variations within the compressive pattern of the graph. And all these are indicative of different symptoms of the patients. If you see yet another graph, the patient voids like this. The initially patient voided in 10 seconds, certain amount, then stopped, one jerk, then stop, either jerk, then stop, either jerk, then stop. And this is often done interruptedly by the patient to contract bulbous pons muscle and empty whatever urine is trickling down slowly, slowly and filling up bulbous urethra. They want to contract their bulbous pons muscle and push that urine out. So it is not unusual to see these interrupted peaks of flow in the end of a compressive pattern. The third pattern is what's called super wider. If you see this, the patient works like this. And that is the graph. The Qmax is reached by a shoot. And this, the Qmax is not standard Qmax, 20, 30. It is high, 40, 50. And then patient violated at Qmax for a while and the quick decline. So a quick rise, a high top and a quick fall is sensitive of a super wider act. And this is Sometimes normal for some females who void by a sudden relaxation of the pelvic floor. They produce a super wider kind of a flow. Here the patient voided in about 12, 13 seconds, the entire bladder volume. If you see an either super wider graph here, here you notice a quick rise and quick fall. But here the volume voided is also small as compared to previous graph. In previous graph, patient void a full bladder, right? 200 ml, 250 ml. Here, patient void only 50 ml, and that also at a peak of peak flow rate of 30 ml per second. So this is a typical of a unstable bladder contraction, and contraction suddenly shot up and patient leaked urine. The fourth pattern is what's called a staccato pattern, and this is seen in patients who have dysfunctional voiding. The patient voids in flowmetry machine like this. Void and stop, void and stop. And when they stop, the flowmetry line will touch the bottom, touch the baseline. This is here, the patient voiding. Voiding, stopping, voiding, stopping, voiding, stopping. And when he's stopping, it is touched to the baseline. And this is the report. Now this kind of a voiding is known as staccato voiding. This happens because of dysfunctional contraction of external thrill sphincter during the voiding. If you see the way they void, as shown in this video, look at his stream, he voids in a jerk and the speed of the flow is good. And then it stops for a while. And then it restarts. It stops for a while and it restarts. So this kind of a jerky start and stop is very typical of 
eccentric contraction in between the flow and this is known as staccato voiding sometimes you get this kind of a pattern which i call interrupted type of a pattern with low q max and more prolonged voiding time here is some patients trying to strain a bit to give you some peaks here and there the patient voided about 298 cc of urine if you see their abdomen by bladder scan you will see this picture that the bladder is full actually these patients are in state of tonic retention of urine and when you ask them to do a urophilometry test they void by abdominal straining they empty certain amount of the bladder volume and they come back with large pvru so if you notice an interrupted voiding pattern where patient is voided only small amount with jerks and peaks please keep this in mind thank you very much for being with me in case you have any question comments regarding the interpretation of urophilometry patterns please write to me on my email